everyone big paulie back for a brand new video brand new review yes i am down here on dover seafront i figured it's only fitting coming down to be by the sea yes uh, because today i'm talking about the latest disney live action movie the little mermaid yes um so far as Disney films go, you know, the live action ones, there's been some good ones. There's been some not so good ones. And I'm happy to say that I love this film. I thought this was a great um, retelling of the story and a great kind of like live action conversion from the animated film. It does follow very close to the original. So... As opposed to Mulan, which, you know, took away a lot of the songs and changed a lot of the story around. This one is very faithful to the original animated film. Uh, now, let's go back to the beginning of casting. Yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about the casting for a moment. Right. Back in the day, when Disney first announced that this film was going to be made... The one name that was echoing around the internet to play Ariel was Chloe Grace Moretz. Now, I figured at the time, because she was a great actress, she is a great actress, this probably would have been a perfect, um, would have been a perfect role for her. But I've got to say, I've got to hand it to Halle Bailey. She bloody knocked it out of the ballpark she was fantastic as ariel um and, and it's unfortunate that a lot of the criticism and a lot of the a lot of the naysayers are saying you can't change you can't change a character's color i know the whole conversation with james bond you know that was written as a white male character but I'm only going to touch on this little bit, just 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 a small bit. But so far as a character like this, she she was brilliant. She was brilliant. Um, she was, you know, at times she could be emotional. She was happy. She had kind of had that Disney princess vibe to her, a live action Disney princess vibe. And uh, her hair, you know, dreadlocks, but red rusty colour so yeah that's perfect and to be perfectly honest I've been trying to think of who else could have played the role of Ariel and I really don't want anyone else to play it I really do, wouldn't see anyone else playing this role now I think she pulled it off absolutely perfect absolutely perfect so fantastic yeah um moving on to <laughs> everyone's favourite Disney villain Ursula, yes. Now, I watched The Little Mermaid animated film again last night, just to be fresh in my mind um, and to be familiar with the characters again after, you know, a while since I last saw it. Uh, and um, I've got to say, um, Melissa McCarthy, yeah, yeah, she did fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Now, Melissa McCarthy is, you know... <sighs> Some people like her, some people don't like her. She's done some good stuff, she's done some bad stuff. Uh, talking about the bad stuff, I mean, she wasn't very good in Ghostbusters. Uh, and she was even worse in that, what was it called? Thunder Force or Thunderbolt or some Thunder something. But she's also really great in other things, such as um, uh, Mike and Molly, the TV series. Uh, she was also in The Heat with Sandra Bullock. She was fantastic in that. Plus, she also did a serious role as well as a, a, a writer, a forger. I can't quite remember what the name of that film was. But she pulled it off. She was fantastic. 
And uh, again, I don't think there's anybody that I would have wanted to see in that role. She pulled it off and she was menacing and comical and, and, and it, the voice was just there. It just sounded like her. So, so far the casting is knocking it out of the ballpark. Let's talk about some of the lesser characters. Uh, we have Javier Bardem uh, as King Triton. And uh, he was really good, you know. Uh, he didn't have a lot to do in the film. He popped up every now and again. But again, really good role. And uh, I think the role fitted him perfectly. Uh, let's talk about some of the little ones. So, you know, we've got Flounder, you know. Uh, Flounder was the fish or the puffer fish or whatever, what type of fish it is. I can't remember. Uh, didn't have too much to do in the film. Uh, I was expecting him to be a bit bigger. Uh, he's kind of a, a little bit smaller than I thought, you know, as opposed to the animated film. We've also got Scuttle, you know, the, uh, the bird. Uh, fantastic again. Brilliant voice acting and absolutely perfect animation for Scuttle. And of course, we've got Sebastian the Crab. Um, Sebastian the Crab kind of like stole most of the film. <laughs> it was fantastic. The voice was perfect. It's just like watching a live action representation of the original Crab from the animated film. It was brilliant. It was brilliant. I loved it. And, um, other characters as well. Eric, uh, I'm not familiar with the actor that played Eric. He was good. Uh, it could have been a little bit better, but I thought he did a good he did a good job. And um, yeah, it, it was just it was just the Little Mermaid. It was Disney's Little Mermaid brought to life. And if you're not familiar with the uh, the film itself or the story of the Little Mermaid, it's about uh, a mermaid called Ariel, played by Halle Bailey, who uh, saves a sailor, Eric, uh, after he falls off off a ship, um, saves his life, and it, Eric wants to pursue this and find this find this uh, mermaid that that saved his life. Now Ariel makes an unfortunate deal with Ursula, the sea witch, um, so that she could go to land. She could become human you know she can grow legs she can have legs and um fall in love with eric and kiss and you know do the disney traditional kiss uh, and but she's only got three days to do it uh if she doesn't seal the kiss within three days then uh ariel belongs to ursula and um if she does of course she she remains as a human they fall in love and live happily ever after the usual disney type tale uh, the visuals in the film were fantastic they were great um there is 3d for this film unfortunately i didn't get to see the 3d um but i've heard the 3d is really bloody good especially the underwater scenes uh with uh, under the sea around the song under the sea all of the creatures dancing and swimming and interacting with each other and I can see the certain scenes in that film that would be perfect for 3D. So um, I don't know whether or not there'll ever be a Blu-ray release of the 3D. You know, probably maybe in Japan or somewhere. But it's not Disney over here. So I think the cinema is probably the only chance you're going to get to see it in 3D. Uh, and if I do come across it any time um, in the next couple of weeks that there is a 3D showing, I'm going to go and see it again because I really want to see what it was like in 3D. Uh, songs were fantastic again and uh, yeah I just thought it was a really good one I, I actually think this is my favorite live action Disney film of the animated remakes um, with Beauty and the Beast coming second so uh, yeah I really enjoyed it I thought it was a really great film very well done truthfully told faithfully done and uh, everybody did a great job on it. Fantastic. So there we go. So that's my review of The Little Mermaid, the uh, 2023 Disney live action remake. How would I rate it on a scale of one to 10? I'm gonna give it eight. Where's me flippers? <laughs> eight out of 10. It definitely deserves that. And um, I had fun with it. It wasn't a packed house in the cinema, but there was lots of kids. 
uh, they were all enjoying it. They were all laughing along with it. And I think some people were maybe singing along to the songs. But uh, I thought it was a really, a really great film. Yeah, well done, Disney. Uh, and if you continue to do this, you know, with these um, animated to live actions, keep this kind of keep this kind of uh, quality. And next year we've got Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs with Rachel Ziegler. I can't wait to see that. She's going to absolutely kill it as Snow White. She was fantastic in West Side Story. We've got Gal Gadot as Bleeding the Evil Queen. That's going to be so good. Um, so far as the dwarves, you know, because, um, you know, in the past with the old, oh, you can't call them that and you got to call them little people and that. And I think even at one point, some some uh, Christmas pantomime replaced dwarves with children. Um, no, you can't. You can't do that. Um, the, the These people, the condition they have is dwarfism. So they are dwarves. End of story. Uh, and even Warwick Davis said that. I'm a dwarf. So um, I really hope that they stick with that next year. You know, stick with it, Disney. Don't go woke and change it up because uh, it'll it'll flop. Um, although I do have one suggestion and I have one hope. I really hope that Peter Dinklage is in Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And because uh, there are so many great dwarf actors out there. You know, we've had Kenny, uh, Kenny Baker in the past and uh, we've had Vern Troyer. And uh, yeah, I think he would be brilliant. I think he would be brilliant. Anyway, that's my review, so I hope you enjoyed it. Like the video by giving it some thumbs up. Blah, 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 blah. Don't forget to subscribe, comment and share, and I'll see you on the next video very soon. Bye-bye!